My friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Pants. What are people wearing them actually hiding beneath? Now, everything we do in life is shadowed by the fact that our time here on the disc world, precariously balanced on top of elephants, which themselves balance on top of a giant turtle, is limited. And in a galaxy like Star Wars, where the number of creatures are almost infinite, it quickly becomes apparent that a species' lifespan directly affects their behavior and mindset. I think humanity 70 to 80 years is pretty much in the Goldilocks zone of lifespans. It gives us just enough time to become wise, but not enough that we start getting bored about life and start looking at other people as playthings. A species' lifespan is built into their genetic code, and many times their bodies begin to stop working once they pass a certain age. Just look at immortal vampire Nick Cage, who clearly has passed his expiration date by a few centuries and has completely lost his mind. Although, it should be noted that immortal vampire Keanu Reeves has exhibited the ability to adapt to his extra centuries of life and has now found a higher purpose by using his superhuman vampire speed and powers to bring justice to the world. Life is a struggle after all, and if there is nothing to overcome or no purpose to fulfill, we can all become a little bit cagey. Now, enough about humans. Today we're going to be talking about the longest lifespans in alien species in the Star Wars galaxy. The Nutty are basically the Ents of the Star Wars galaxy, but just a bit more weird. The Jedi Archives actually classify these beings as sentient, plant-like shapeshifters, which actually makes sense if you look at how their body functions. For one, the Neti didn't eat food. They required only sunlight and water to survive, like a plant. They were very efficient creatures and only needed around one-tenth of the water that other species of the same size needed. All Neti were force-sensitive and could train in hibernation techniques, which could allow them to survive for very long periods of time without any nutrients or sunlight. This came at a great cost, of course. The Neti were extremely slow and boring to be around. They were very deliberate, and they rarely ever made it. it was probably every 200 years or so that they would actually make an offspring, which meant that their population was relatively small. The result of Neti fortification was a seed that lay dormant for a thousand years before germinating. The Neti's skin was bark-like and they had the ability to shift the size and shape of their body to look more humanoid or more like a tree. They could also stretch anywhere between 2 to 10 meters tall in height. It's unsure just how long a Neti could live, but their lifespans usually were thousands of years long. And this was definitely reflected by how patient they were with the younger species in the galaxy, which is basically everyone. Next, we have the youngest species on this list, which were the Wookiees. They had an average lifespan of around 400 years, which means that Disney will be able to use Chewbacca in all of their future movies for a pretty long time. Who knows, maybe Chewie will even outlast Disney itself. Wookiees were taller and stronger than your average human being. Their average height is around 2.2 to 2.5 meters, which places Yao Ming on the lower end of that average. Although Yao Ming is hairless and would never be mistaken for a Wookiee. Wookiees had a similar reproduction cycle to humans and pregnancy usually lasted around a year. Although Wookiee pups could mature a lot quicker than human babies and were usually pretty fully conscious and able to walk around by the age of one. Interesting enough, unlike humans, Wookiees stayed in the prime of their lives for a much longer period. They also didn't visibly age in the same way either. This could be because their entire bodies were covered in fur. The only noticeable aging would come through the lack of pigmentation in their hair. Wookiees were considered in the prime of their lives in their 200s and mid-aged by 300 to 350 years old. Wookiees above the age of 351 were considered old. The Wookiees diet was quite healthy and diverse thanks to the extremely vibrant and rich ecosystem in Kaishik. Although Wookiees were usually considered pretty mild-mannered and gentle, their larger body frames and strength were legendary. Wookiees lived in the treetops of Kaishik and developed claws for hunting and scaling the massive trees that made their cities. It was also important for them to keep off the forest floor because a lot of terrifying beasts walked around down there. The Jendai were a formless species that were basically immortal. Their bodies lacked any bones and were made out of a jumble of flesh and muscles which could bend and move into various shapes. The only part of their body that stayed the same was their face, which was quite grotesque and full of razor-sharp teeth. In the Star Wars galaxy, it's actually quite important to judge a book by its cover. 
This way, when you encounter new aliens, in most cases, if an alien looks evil, it is and should be met with fire. The Jedi were probably aware that their shapeless form freaked out other people, so they generally would wear heavy armor to give their body some sort of shape. The Jedi also lacked any important or vital organs which would present weak spots on their bodies. Instead of having a heart, the Jedi's circulatory system pumps blood through contractions of the muscles and capillaries. Millions of nerve clusters also ran throughout a Jedi's body, giving it extremely fast reflexes and extreme sensitivity. It's said that a Jedi could sense another being's heartbeat from over 200 meters away. To make matters even worse, the Jedi could quickly regenerate body parts within minutes after having them cut off. This rapid regeneration was one of the reasons why the Jedi were rumored to live as long as 7,000 years. Although the reason for the death of a Jedi was usually caused by their brain degrading. Although they could regenerate most of their flesh, this ability did not heal their brain, which meant that most Jedi became mentally unstable in the latter years of their life. Jedi who reached this point in their lives usually left their home planets and became criminals or just murderous scum, which is why they have such a bad reputation in the galaxy. It should be noted that the Jedi, before their brains started deteriorating, were quite an enlightened and peaceful species. The Insati are a species that made another list we made a long time ago called the most messed up species in the Star Wars galaxy or something like that. These humanoid aliens look pretty normal besides the two long tentacles coming out of the side of their face. The Insati use these appendages like a straw to penetrate another being's brain which they then would suck out in a soup like form. The Insati believe that this substance carried an individual's life force or spirit or something. They only times would string up a victim and feed off of their brain multiple times before they expired. The Nzadi especially enjoyed feasting on those with force powers or strong wills. The stronger their prey, the less they would have to feed. Although the Nzadi do look humanoid on the outside, they're actually quite different on the inside. They possess no biorhythm and have no body heat. There have been a lot of attempts to study an Nzadi's anatomy, but most of these attempts ended up with the scientist having his or her brain drained out of their skulls. The Nzati, like the Jendai, could also regenerate their body parts, although in a much slower rate. Still, they could live to be around a thousand years. Although they physically weren't all that impressive, the Nzati had telepathic abilities, which helped them control other beings. Their thirst for brain soup, however, often made them act like addicts. And because their actions were more or less frowned upon by the rest of society, they usually left behind them a trail of bodies and lawmen chasing after them. The smartest and most talented Nzadi became assassins for criminal syndicates, which allowed them to align their natural biological urges with a well-paying profession. Despite their sluggish appearance, the Huts were one of the toughest and hardest beings to kill in the galaxy, which is why amongst the enemies of Jabba the Hutt, Leia is not known as a rebel hero or a princess, but as the Hutt Slayer. Although the Huts claim that their homeworld was now Hutta, the legends say that they originally came from the world of Varl, a planet full of giant terrifying beasts, which is what helped the Huts evolve into the terrifying beasts that they would become themselves. Huts generally grew around 3 to 4 meters long, but much older Huts could become much, much larger. Their bodies lacked a skeleton and instead was full of extremely strong and tough muscles. Younger Huts were actually quite quick and could easily kill a being with a slap from its giant tail. Older Huts who became too large oftentimes had to rely on repulsor lifts to get around. A Hut's skin was completely resistant of most environmental dangers, including poisonous gas and even the most corrosive chemicals and acids. Their skin was also resistant to blaster fire, and should any weapons penetrate that skin, they had multiple layers of blubber and actually many redundant vital organs. And should things get really bad, a hut could also regenerate most of its body parts, even their face and their brains. Huts were hermaphrodites and could asexually produce. When giving birth and nurturing a child, they would become more maternal in nature due to the hormones in their bodies and oftentimes neglected their businesses and other duties. Huts were usually running or working for various criminal syndicates. Hut babies were helpless and stayed inside their mother's pouches until around 50 years in age. By the time they became 200 years old, the hut was considered an adult. And by the time they reached 850 years old, they were considered elderly. One of the oldest huts on record lived to the age of 1700 years old. 
No one really knows or remembers where Yoda came from. His time at the Jedi Temple spanned almost the entire golden era of the Order, which was between the Rusan Reformation and the Clone Wars. Since reaching the rank of Jedi Master by the age of 96, Yoda has taught more Jedi than any other master of the era. Extremely wise and caring, in many ways Yoda was the grandfather of entire generations of Jedi, who had been torn away from their families at a very young age. Yoda would die from natural causes at 900 years old. Although his stature was small and his body was frail and weak at the time, his power in the Force was still unrivaled, which allowed him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with much larger expert duelists like Darth Sidious and Darth Tyrannus. Yoda wasn't the only member of a species that joined the Order, however. A female member of a species known as Yaddo also sat on the High Jedi Council for some time. She was younger than Yoda by half a millennia, but still quite wise and powerful in her own way. So there you have it guys, those are six of the alien species in Star Wars that have the longest lifespans. As you can tell, most of these species are a lot more methodical and slower moving and patient than humanity is, and I think that really has to do with just how long they've been around. Maybe that's something we can learn from. Anyway guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.